Welcome! In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to use multi-animal DLC for a single animal project. Today we're going to go over how to use the standalone GUI on a single animal using a quote-unquote multi-animal project. So launch the GUI and let's create a new project. To use the multi-animal feature 2.2, you're simply going to check is this a multi-animal project and then click OK, which will launch the GUI as before, with a few notable exceptions. In 2.2, the workflow is largely the same. You're going to start by editing the config file. There are a few notable differences. Namely, we have individuals, unique body parts, multi-animal body parts, and the skeleton we need to take care of now. For individuals, you're just going to put one if it's truly one mouse. This, of course, can be renamed to mouse one, etc. For unique body parts, you're going to actually list any objects or things that you want to track that would not be found more than once, i.e. a corner of a box. Now for multi-animal body parts, this is where you'd put your body parts per mouse, i.e. they each have a snout, left ear, right ear, etc. And importantly, we're going to define the skeleton. And here we want to really over-connect the skeleton, because this is now used in training to link body parts to each other. The skeleton doesn't have to be anatomically correct. The idea is to overconnect the body parts that make sense. So you can even connect the left ear to the tail base, for example. In the GUI, you can essentially work through the tabs. The first one being, we're going to extract frames now from the videos that we added in the first step. And then we're going to start labeling the frames. So here's the new multi-animal labeling GUI applied to single animal. Importantly, you'll note that we have select an individual and then select body parts. And there's also single, which allows you to then label corners of the box shown here. This GUI also has the same functionality as the normal GUI, namely you can zoom and adjust the body parts as shown here. As a reminder, the size of these circles is not indicative of the training area you're giving the network. This is just for your visualization, so you want to be as accurate as possible where that arrow is pointing. After labeling your frames, you're going to want to check these labels to make sure that they're accurate and refine them if necessary. Here, there's two options, check individuals and check labels as normal, which shows the body parts differentially colored. After you've checked the accuracy and edited them in the GUI if needed of all your labeled data, then we're going to create a training set as before. Note there's a new step called Crop and Label Data, which we recommend for better data augmentation for multi-animal projects. Okay, now that we've made a training set, it's time to train our network. Importantly, for multi-animal projects, we actually train for less time. For this demo, I'm going to train for a really too short of time, but in general, you're going to train to about 20,000 to 50,000 iterations. Here, we're just going to do a few hundred. Now that training is done, you'll see in the terminal that it tells you that it's ready to evaluate. So now we can go to the Evaluate tab, and we're going to do a couple different things. One, we're going to plot the predictions, and then, after that's done, we're going to also plot the maps. Now these are score maps and part affinity field maps and lock refinement layers. You might notice that there's another button that says want to plot all the maps. We could have checked that to yes before we click run, which would plot these maps for every image in the train test set, which is computationally quite expensive. So we've also built in another button that allows you just to plot three of the maps to get a sense of how well the data looks. All right, let's analyze our video now. I've selected a video, I've picked the video type. I want to create a video to check just the raw detections, and then we click run. After Analyze Videos is complete, we're going to convert our data into tracklets. We use temporal information now to link the animal across frames. While refining tracklets is more important with multiple animals, we'll still look at this here. You'll notice that an H5 file is not created after Analyze Videos now. What you get is a pickle file that's used for refinement in this step. After this step, you get the H5 that you're looking for. Alright, so here's the GUI. This gives you many features, namely you can click on a point, look at the past and future trajectories, you can actually edit points and swap trajectories if there's multiple animals. 
Today, of course, the tracking isn't very good because we've only done it for a few hundred iterations, but in general, this is how we'll edit. The first step, of course, was to launch the GUI and take care of any major outliers. In this step, what you can do now is actually filter this data, go back in, relaunch it in the GUI, and clean up any outliers. This is essentially allowing you to refine any of the tracking data you created. So now you'll see the H5 that you're used to is filtered. You can relaunch the GUI and look at the results. Okay, now that we have an H5 file that's corrected and we're happy with it, we can do all the different things we want to do with the outputs of deep lab code, including, of course, creating videos and the rest of the pipeline, like extracting outliers, merging them back in, and retraining if needed. Notice, you can now color videos by animal ID or by body parts, and hey, for a few minutes of training, not looking so bad. Thanks for watching this tutorial. We hope it was helpful and happy deep lab cutting.